Listening to this uh, oh. presentation, I became aware of something. I, I think I understand now why the young Marx was so, thought so much about alienation. I mean, it's an old issue. And of course, oh, sorry, sorry. No, I was just uh, joking a little about the young Marx uh, writing about alienation. I think in Germany it's an issue about Jews, Germans, and alienation. It's a word that disappeared somehow. I don't know why. Belong the, I wrote a sentence belonging, I take a sentence from each lecture. Belonging is more than a piece of paper. All right, yes, I mean, this is, of course. So let's move to our third and last and uh, a, a presentation, which is uh, Dr. Chaim Guizeli. Okay. Back to roots and that internet access to Jewish heritage Germany, back to roots, which is the future of memory, I understand, right? I mean, okay, please. Good morning. 17 seconds, please, to activate my presentation. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to meet you this morning in Betat Wutzot. It's a special pleasure for me to meet you here in Betat Wutzot, a place that I've been working for the last uh, 10 years and more. As you know, Betat Futsot uh, was uh, created 35 years ago with the aim of uh, documenting and describing or tell the story of Jewish communities in the diaspora for the last 2,000 years at least. Uh, the problem is that during the last generations, the focus has switched from general story to private uh, story to local history. And everyone is interested in his own ancestry, in his own uh, uh, background and uh, private history. We do have a huge database, better would say, but still this database cannot and probably will not be able to cover each and every one's history or uh, heritage. That's the reason we are following what has been done all over the world in this aspect. And uh, in the following minutes, I'll try to show you a short survey of uh, digital resources accessible through internet done by non-Jewish organizations and private individuals in Germany during the last years. So, I selected a number of the categories, what we are talking about, and you see on the side the codes that I created for the next uh, slide. We are talking about vital records, local history, visual documentation, Holocaust-related topics, Jewish press manuscripts and synagogues. So, if we look at the players, I mean, who is doing what, we see a list of different types of organizations and more or less what everyone is doing. I would like to emphasize the last line, private individuals, also private organizations that are doing a wonderful job all over Germany in documenting, preserving and making available huge information of local history, of private history, family history and the kind. So, Let's start our survive with vital records. Vital records are available on the internet for specific regions of Germany, and I'm uh, focusing especially on Baden-Württemberg. It's a long story of uh, these vital records, of uh, what happened to them, and of course I don't have the time, it's also the place to talk about this aspect. So I'll just want to take you to the website of uh, State Archives in Stuttgart, Baden-Württemberg, and there you may find this list, alphabetic list, of all places in Baden-Württemberg that uh, their vital records are being kept in this archive. And not only that, but they are available over the internet. Let's see how it's been done. Let's see this list. We can see here uh, inventory of type of documents. And you see the documents for Mannheim, but also from smaller places. And if we select Heigerloch, which is a small, uh, uh, small village, we can see how these documents really look like. And uh, let's see this one, for instance. You can enlarge, and then you have this image. You see the red line, the red uh, uh, emphasis in the back uh, of the slide, uh, of the bottom of the slide, and enlarge at the upper side of this slide. And let us look at Rexingen, another small village in the Württemberg. If you click on this link, then you may be able to access the 
actual records, you may enlarge them from 10% to more, and uh, because it's not always easy to read what is there, I translated them, this paragraph, you see, it's an index of the names of different Jews living in this particular uh, village in 19th century. If you go to another place, Nagelsberg, you can access this type of document, which is a family book. On each page, there's a whole story of a specific family, starting with the parents, or the, at least three generations, the grandparents, parents, and children. And if I enlarge, you can see all the information. This uh, Ber Jacob was born in 1746. Also, you may access the database of the Central uh, German Archives. Um, there is a memorial book of all victims of uh, Nazis. That was printed many years ago in a number of editions, but now they have a database that has been kept updated regularly. And uh, you may conduct a search of this database. I selected the family name Zurndorfer. Here we are. And then you have the results. But unlike the printed edition that has only a list of names and dates and places, this database tries to add more and more information. So if you are looking for specific individuals, sometimes you may find more information than uh, uh, only his uh, name or vital records. Also, the same central archives have a database of uh, wills. So if you try to see if you are on the wheel of Rothschild family, this is a place to access and to see uh, what is written there. Not only vital records of this type, but also list of family names. As you know, in early 19th century, Jews in Germany were uh, ordered to adopt family names. Some of them had family names before that period, but most of them did not have, and uh, there are lists. And, uh, with the previous name and the new name. And this is a database that uh, contains a specific lists according to different places. Um, this is typical for Germany, by the way, because the same uh, process happened in Central and Eastern Europe, but unfortunately we don't have the list, or almost don't have the list from those places. Uh, and of course not from all places in Germany, but still from a significant number of places. And you have here uh, the contact information of the wonderful people who are doing this project, and they are private individuals or private organizations, it's not a state organization. Let us look at local history. Many places in Germany, towns, cities, and small villages, have on their website information of the local Jewish history. This is from Fürth in Bavaria. This is a local organization in Rexing, the same place that I have mentioned before, and uh, is about the local synagogue. And this one is from a place called uh, uh, Grossgrau. It is uh, south of uh, Frankfurt in Hessen. And uh, if you enter this site, you may see more information about local history and also uh, a movie describing the building of the former synagogue in this place. And, of course, you may uh, navigate the site of Speyer with a long Jewish history, but also Kippenheim, a very small village in Baden, in central region of Baden. And um, in this place, uh, there is a synagogue which uh, was declared by the government of Baden-Württemberg as a national monument in the same category with the cathedrals of Ulm and Freiburg. And Ottenzen, which today is a district of Hamburg, but uh, deals with the Jewish history of the Jewish of the history of the Jewish community in Altuna, and also Vogelsberg, which is also located in uh, Hessen, and um, Erfurt, and Erfurt has an interesting and amazing um, network of uh, places that deal with Jewish history, including an old building that was uh, built probably in late 11th century, or early 20th century, uh, 12th century, sorry. And uh, you may find all the information on this website. Not only that, but also the city of Erfurt has uh, approached UNESCO, with, uh, asking them to recognize the Jewish heritage of uh, Erfurt as a world 
uh, heritage site. And not only that, but also small places like Obernkirchen, which is uh, in Low Saxony, and uh, this place, like many others, have information about the local Jewish cemetery. You may access the site, and um, in some places you may even find full information about uh, each and every tombstone. And also Aschaffenburg in northern Bavaria, which is actually in Franconia. And of course, Plauen with uh, its uh, wonderful synagogue, modernist synagogue that was there. And the last uh, a commercial application uh, that you may download for four and a half euros uh, for your iPhone or iPad, and uh, it helps you find Jewish locations in Köln. Photographs, which is an additional item, and um, there are lots of information about uh, on this aspect. I'll show you only a few of them. And uh, this one was uh, developed, uh, it's a huge database with tens of thousands of photographs in digital format that was developed by the Fritz Bauer Institute in cooperation with the Jewish Museum in Frankfurt am Main. And uh, you may select uh, photographs according to the topics. I selected fright side, which means uh, leisure time, and leisure time uh, horse riding. And you may select any photograph. Well, not everyone was a champion and uh, see the details. And also, the same is available on the website of uh, Nuremberg uh, City, uh, sorry, Nuremberg Archives, and you have the list of the photographs available in this archive. Holocaust. There are lots of information about Holocaust and Holocaust-related topics. I selected to show you this uh, biographical memorial site developed by the city of Munich. And uh, I conducted a search for a Kaufmann family name, which is a very common uh, family name of uh, German Jews. And uh, here I have the results. A number of people called Kaufmann. And this particular Adolf Kaufmann was a lawyer and theater director in, in uh, Munich. And you see here the information, not only the name, but also uh, he was born in Mainz, he was single, he lived uh, Munich and uh, you have the names of his parents and when he moved to Munich and uh, his addresses in Munich uh, at different times. And also a church organization, it's a private organization in Baden this time that uh, deals with uh, Holocaust sites, especially you may find a list of all places uh, in Baden uh, that used to have a Jewish population or Jewish community and uh, when and where exactly the local Jews were um, deported. Private individuals, uh, which is probably the most amazing uh, part of this survive, and uh, I can show you a lot of them, but I focused on this particular site, uh, belongs to Mr. Hans Petelkau. Uh, by the way, the site has information about other topics, non-Jewish topics, but also a lot of information about Jews in northern regions of Hessen. And um, information is amazing, like uh, genealogy information, also information related to synagogues, and story of specific synagogues and uh, symmetries, and you even may be able to see photographs of uh, separate tombstones and have all the information. Jewish press, which is also a very important part of Jewish heritage in Germany, and uh, there are a number of projects that deal with this aspect. One of them is, con is called Compact Memory, and is digitizing uh, Jewish newspapers and periodicals from 19th century and first half of the 20th century. And you may access this site and actually read the newspaper to see the original format, it is digitized. Uh, this one, for instance, is from 1840, the Orient. It's a very important reportage of what happened in Alexandria and Egypt at the time. And this is the way the things looks at the Goethe University, University in Frankfurt. And um, also you may see items like um, uh, press, especially Jewish press, published in exile uh, after 1933 in different places in the world, for instance in Shanghai, but other places as well. Manuscripts. Manuscripts, we deal first of all 
with uh, Hebrew manuscripts, medieval times or later. But, uh, and you see, and you may see this project uh, done by the uh, State Library in Munich. We have a number of examples, like this one, Sethra Medida, Book of Measurements, is uh, actually a mathematics tractate translated into Hebrew by Mordechai Fintz in the 15th century from a Latin or Spanish uh, translation of the Arabic original. And another example, it's a fragment from uh, a Hebrew translation of uh, Roman d'Alexandre, or Alexander Roman uh, by Alexandre de Bernay, one of the bestsellers of medieval literature in Western Europe. And also, there are other types of uh, uh, manuscripts, like this particular copy of the uh, Babylonian Talmud. Uh, it uh, was part of the library, former rules of Bavaria, dukes and then kings of Bavaria. It's a famous uh, uh, copy. You can access and actually read, no problems. And incidentally, this copy is part, a replica of course, is part of the permanent exhibition of Beta Puzzo. So if you go upstairs in the museum on the third floor, you'll be able to see the facsimilia of this uh, particular manuscript. And also there are other items, different types of information, not only about Hebrew manuscripts, but also about Yiddish culture, like flyers or posters, and musical scores from uh, past creations in Germany. And also digitizing uh, old editions of uh, the Kabbalah, the Zohar, and you see here how it looks like inside uh, in German translation. Synagogues, which also are a very important part of Jewish heritage in Germany. And uh, I would like to uh, show you this project. Um, started at the Technical University of Darmstadt uh, some 12 years ago by a group of students. And uh, they created virtual reconstructions of destroyed synagogues in Germany. And uh, it's an amazing project. Uh, a lot of effort and documentation have been invested in this project. And uh, the results are available on the internet, but also were turned into exhibition. Uh, this is, for instance, uh, a reconstruction of the uh, synagogue in Leipzig. You see not only the exterior, but also the interior. Along with all the explanations, you can spend a lot of time uh, uh, navigating this uh, site and reading all the available information. And uh, by the way, this uh, exhibition was also shown in Beta Futsot um, some years ago. Uh, who visited Beta Putzot had the chance to see this amazing project. At the bottom, you may see my email address. So if you have any questions, please note down this email address and feel free to contact me anytime. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much.